Let's kick it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to what's new in 2211. Now after the disappointment of the last build where there was nothing really new or major implemented, I thought we'd jump straight into one of the major new features of this build, and that is headless support. But what's that? Well it's not a way to make Windows easier to use for people without brains. No, it's a feature for remotely managing computers, and mainly servers, which might not have a keyboard or monitor attached. And this also works if the network goes down. So how do you remotely monitor a computer if the network's gone down? Well, as we'd see here, because we have to edit the boot in to get in at the vdirect feature, and it works over COM parts, which is most likely a serial connection. And you have to duplicate the operating system entry and add the vdirect switch. Then you save that, and then you have to shut down. Now obviously since this is virtual box, you don't have you don't go over the real serial parts. So you have to add one in here. And as you can see I've got one here, Vbox part one, create pipe and all that. Since the virtual box part obviously goes over named pipes and Telnet uses the IP parts on the computer, then we need something to translate between them. And luckily somebody on the virtual box forums wrote something to go between them, this named pipe TCP proxy. So thank you to Mr. Svechkov for that. I probably butchered that, so I apologise for, for that. Unfortunately, though, this doesn't actually work properly with this build. It works fine on every other build that's got it on, but on this build, it doesn't quite work properly. So I had to write my own. So I did. So we'll just start that going. Don't really need to see it. So bump it off over to the side. And I still need to tell that though. So there we go, connected. I've made this top more, so hopefully it'll stay on top when the magic happens. And yeah, there you go. See, we get this now. Nice connect, this um, boot operating screen here. Now, there's a bug in this build. It's It works fine in every other build as well. It's a bug in this. If you press up and down keys on the keyboard to select which one it is, the cursor doesn't actually move. The, you know the highlighted operating system entry doesn't actually move up and down but it does actually select it internally if you know what I mean so if I press down the internal cursor will be on the second entry but the screen won't show the second entry so then you press enter obviously to build it up and there we go it starts Windows now this is meant to work on server builds and since this is a client build it doesn't actually have the main feature of this which is a command prompt which you get around here and you can look at the processes and the memory situation and what's going on and I'll show you that in a, the server 2008 build of that later on when I've done with this oh, screen's moved off over to the side of it there we go so yeah there's nothing much to see on here at the minute but if we log on to Windows I'll just move that out of the way so here we go and that's popped up because I replaced some things for some things coming later on. And there's also an API for this which is in the kernel obviously. So if we look at NTOS kernel, there's loads of functions to support this, loads of these headless functions here. And I looked at them and there's some that you can actually, well, I wrote a driver to call some of them to see what happens. So here we go to bits, headless, I've already installed the driver, so it's just net start my fault since it's based on a Rasinovich sample that started. And then it's IOTL call. So if I show this here. And we initialize it first. And that's succeeded. Then we can do some, some stuff we can put write a string to the thing. Yay! There you go. And you can also query some stuff, which is. I'll say that's enough again. And you can see it's enabled, and I don't know what other data is, I couldn't figure out what that does. And we can dump command, which dumps all the stuff that gets written out to it. 
and something else as well, which we'll see. Oh, see, so we get a log of everything that's been loaded, and it pages, and then it, it dies because I noticed that there's a global variable that doesn't get updated properly or something in the kernel, so it tries to use that and then it crashes because it's not been set properly. Now here we get the, the limited version of the command line which for some unknown reason Microsoft decided to call not sack which sounds very sort of rude but there we go uh, we get a limited com command prompt it doubles all the keys to type in for some reason so yeah it's not really much good this limited one you can see all the log entries which is just what we've just seen Yeah, and you can also restart the system and that's about it that's what you can do with that command console So yeah, now I'll put up the server 2008 version so you can see what's going on in the actual command console you get on server builds. So here we go with the server 2008 version, we connect the telnet again and we start it up. So yeah, we get a nice little different boot manager here. Now the last one is an up and down works finally, so you can see it does actually work. Now this one here says EMS enabled, that's what Microsoft actually called this function at release time. It stands for Emergency Management Services. And as you can see here, when it actually takes the keys, and you press enter on that second one, third one even. When it eventually boots up. Oop. There we see, we get the actual SAC console, it stands for Special Administrative Console and we press and we can see we get loads of different things here, we can dump the kernel log which that's the log that we've just seen and we can t-list which is the, the you know the process list here and the, the memory the usage, the page pool, pool now since the computer crashed last time and didn't shut down cleanly, another new feature of this build will be shown when we boot up. Oh, we don't need headless this time. Yeah, it's um, a tool that runs on startup to check if the system crashed last time and if it did it pops up the dialogue and you can report it to Microsoft. And that's what we're gonna look at when it eventually boots up. And here we had the machine just recovered from a fatal system failure. We'd like to provide information about the problem so it can be fixed. And this is caused by what oh, was just on there, I should have just clicked this here, PCH fault, which stands for PC Health Fault. Now it runs on startup every time, and this check argument here ensures that it looks in the minidump directory to see if there's any new minidumps that it hasn't seen before. And if there is any, it pops up that message, and you can click yes, and it brings up the normal bug page. Now everybody knows this is from Neptune, and it even says they're Neptune bugs, so I'm not going to bother going into that. But there is something interesting in the source of this page now. I've looked for it twice before and keep losing it, so I just search for it and oh, <laughs> and then even when I search for it, I can't get it right. Up, there we go. Now the up, the server address for where it sends the bug reports is this beta dot mspchealth dot com pcfs upload server dot dll. Now this site actually well, it doesn't exist anymore, so typing it in is not going to help you. Type it into Explorer, but by the magic of the Internet Archive, oh yeah, I don't have the end of clipboard sharing in, so that's what it was, wasn't it? Yep. And we browse history, and we can see this site in all of its glory. And I mean, all of its glory, and it goes back to 2001, so it's, it wasn't continued long after the beta program was over. And this is the entirety of the website. Welcome to Microsoft PC Health Beta Website 2. And that's it. I just thought that was a fun little thing to show that's referenced in the source code. Another new thing in this build uh, is the first appearance of the XP command controls. You know, they're the windows which are all nice and shiny compared to the flat ones if you don't use the manifest. And their first appearance is in this build. So if we go to my store of bits of interest. Can open up common controls. Now these are all the original ones. So we've got the the rebar, the list view, header controls, progress bar, the animation control. This is meant to be invisible, so that's why it doesn't show anything. It's a native font control. 
<coughs> mouse pin up again. Right, so if we open up the UX controls, are you ready for this? Oh, it looks exactly the same. Now they are indeed different, I haven't just made two copies of the same thing and changed the name of it. If I find it in the list, I can show you, I think it's that one. Yep, see that all these are, have the UX in their class names rather than just the plain. Where's the other one? There it is. See, that's the original one, two to class 32, all the original names you know, you know and love. And this one, they're all prefixed with UX. Uh, we can highlight that just to show us that one. Yeah. Now, this is because while the controls are in here, the actual theme manager isn't present in this build. And as we look at the code, we can see it searches for a theme manager window to initialize the things. And then it creates some shared memory. And but the theme manager isn't present in this build, so while the controls are there, it tries setting up the controls, but there's nothing to to actually theme the windows. So while they exist, they're just the same as the XP as the the normal common controls. So there's nothing really different about them. In the next build, the UX theme exists, so they will be different and you will be reviewing this then. Now the major new UI in this build is the Neptune logon screen. So if I just get rid of all these. But before I show you that, I just want to show you the control panel. Now you see here all the options. Don't there's what? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. 24 options. Right then. So we close that. I'll show you the logon screen, which is in the loghonhta.dll. It's a HTML application. And here we see it. Welcome. Click on him to start, and you can do, and you can type in your password. And you sign on as a guest. And the button down here, turn off the computer, that actually hibernates the computer. And if you hold shift, like it says, oop, you get restart the computer. And if you hold control, you get a completely shut down computer, which does turn it off. As you can see here, we get a password hint, which is obnoxiously shouting at me. Yeah, it just pops on its past. This is what works. I'm already logged on. So, nope. So if we close that down now, and if we go back to the control panel, you'll see now there's only 23 options. So what happened there? Well, if we're looking for the in the code of one of the components which is shell gina the shell gina and that stands for i can't remember what gina stands for but it's the part of the sec logon security package and if, if we see here in the dll main the first thing that runs when it this dll is loaded it into any process it doesn't have to be the logon screen and it deletes a registry key now this registry key is one of the namespace control panel namespace extensions and if you go back to the actual build, we'll see it's the users and groups um, control panel entry. It's not there anymore. So yeah, it deletes that. I don't know why it deletes that, but that's the first thing it does when it's loaded up into any process. It just deletes all that. There's one bit of the logon screen that's commented out of the source code. Well, it's not commented out, it's just not used. I'll show you this again. It's not used in the thing. So if we look at the source code of it, down near the bottom when it's building up the actual things on the logon screen. Yeah, it's this one here, fill in the user frame, that's the the bits of it we can click here, like this Bob and the guest bit we can click. So in here, one of the this parameter here is left blank, always left blank. Even when it's doing the guest down here, that one's left blank. If we go up to the function definition, which is just this one here. It says here, note image. Oh, I don't know if that's related to the email, if it's a pending emails, which was in one of the screenshots of the Neptune logon screen. It showed you there was pending emails and you could click on that and it took it to your emails. So what I did was I hacked a version of the logon screen. Turn into a theme, isn't it? Hacking things. Got tools, not tools. Got tools, Shajina and log on with a flag 
and there we go if we add in the, it's the same gif as the flag at the top I added that into it and it displays a little flag down there or any picture you'd put into there it doesn't do anything you can it doesn't click on it you can't right click on it it just doesn't do anything but yeah it's just a interesting thing I thought anyway another thing that this log on screen does is if you type in a password and then you leave it I'll speed this up later because it takes a while first you get the hint as we saw before it's a helpful reminder there I wouldn't recommend doing that in real life if you put a password in and don't put the password in the hint and if you leave it a bit longer eventually it'll just go off and disappear as if you never tried to log on at all so if you click it and then go ooh something shiny over there and you go and investigate then you could come back and it disappear I mean it doesn't really affect anything because you know you don't want anybody to log in if you leave your password there and walk off do you I mean, not that you do that but you know I suppose it's some measure of safety built into this now the Shajina interface is comprises a bunch of iDispatch interfaces which means you can call them from virtual, virtual Visual Basic or any, you can do it from C++ but it's a bit it's a bit of a, a ball ache to do that so you can, yeah there's log on user which you can use to log people on, log in, put the password in and change password so this is also how in this build you could if you really wanted to change the picture because it's in one of these things it's in setting, it's the setting um, I think it's picture name, picture path. There's a setting you can set that, and then you put in the path to the picture, and it'll change it on the logon screen. As well as that, there's also a function in Shell 32 in this build, which is called sure set user picture path. Now, this interestingly enough is added for this build, so you might think it goes with the logon screen, but it doesn't because it set it changes the picture path if you call it and set the path it puts it in the wrong place for the log on screen to pick it up so you can set it all you want with that but it'll never show up on the on the log on screen likewise the get picture path will always fail since it looks in the all users folder all users picture folder to find it and I can show you some of that since I've done some visual basic script coding lord it's been a long time since I did this but should Gina and that's C script logo it VBS and we run it and we can get a, a lot of well some info about the accounts on this computer like logged on has it got a password yes where the picture is it's the default user everybody sets the default user picture and the password hint we can get that this is an administrator account you can't get all of this from like a normal user account it's just from administrator accounts that you can get all of this information there's account type owners guests now strangely enough this uses this interface uses the Neptune account type descriptions so if you set a standard account to the, like the lowest standard account it'll turn up in here as children which if you've looked at Neptune is that's one of the options for when creating an account you can create a children account or an adult account or the owner account or obviously the guest account yep you can see that that bobs twice there because that's the current user at the bottom there's also one another thing in Shagina which I don't know why it's there but it is is if we go down here you can see there's a common dialog interface now this just opens the standard um, common dialog box for open or is it for save? I can't remember but I've written a thing and I'll have a look message box, I think that's what it is isn't it? that one, yep, message box as you can see it's just a standard open dialog box now I don't know why that's in there, maybe again maybe you could change your picture from the logon screen, I don't know, or whatever else um, Shijina powered in Neptune but in this it doesn't actually do anything it just opens it up and you can see the the file name that was selected as you can see it's a simple interface, set the flags the, fil uh, the filter index, then show the dialog and then after that it's done another change in this build is the way disk full notifications are issued and handled first I'll show you in the last build which by extension is the same as Windows 2000 
Now in, the, in Windows 2000, in the last build, this is how it shows you if you're running out of disk space on the drive. Yeah, you can delete this by click disk cleanup and that launches the disk cleanup wizard or just straight cancel it. Now, as you can see, there's no um, cause given to actual what's left on the disk. It, it just straight shows the dialog. As you can see here, it's, if you've got a copy of the source code, it's called share handle disk full in there. And unless anybody's created an event called disable load disk warning, then it just straight checks, well it does a few checks, see if it's got the recycler on the drive, the, actual, the recycle bin folder, and if not, it just, well if so, it just jumps straight in here, creates a dialog, and that's the one that you see there. Now on this build, 22.11, however, wait, wait, on this one, it's in no disk space. As you can see from the name of the file, it doesn't launch a dialog. We get a balloon instead. You're running out of disk space on local disk C to free the disk space on this drive, delete on us, click here, and that launches the disk cleanup wizard as it does before. Now if you leave it, it disappears. And if you keep leaving it, eventually it will reappear and it keeps flashing up like that until you click on it or until you, you can't dismiss it so you have to click on it and then it launches the disk cleanup wizard now for this build, in this build they've actually put some smarts into it and it does actually check the disk it creates that, it creates a thread for it so that's why you need to and um, why I needed to create a command line app for it because you have to wait for the thread to finish it actually calls get disk free space and it actually checks if it's within some threshold. Yeah. Another change in this build is as if that wasn't enough already. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you can re-enable the, the user's icon in there if you just reinsert that registry entry. It doesn't permanently delete it. Yeah, another change in this build is in NT backup. When it eventually launches, it takes a long while this. We get a new thing here. Automated system recovery wizard. The ASI preparation wizard helps you create a two-part backup of your system. So if you click on it, you get this nice wizard. And it helps you create a backup of your files. And what it does is it creates a full backup of the system files anywhere you want to, so like on your C drive or anything, it creates the full backup. And then it creates a floppy disk. Yeah, remember them? Yeah, I know, I'll just show you, it's probably easier to show you. If I put it in C backup. Yep, see, you can create the backup. And I'll pause it until it's finished. So now it's about finished now, as you can see, and then it saves the system state, which is the registry, you can see it down here. And eventually it gets finished with all that. And it pops up a dialog. Eventually, there we go, you have to insert a blank formatted diskette, ooh, diskette ladies and gentlemen, ooh. Now I can't quite click on the virtual drive thing to the virtual drive, virtual box thing to because the recording monitor's in the way. But I think it's got a disk in there. Okay. And then so what did it write to the disk? Well if we go in here, click on it. And it created a SIF file, which if you're familiar with installing Windows, that's the answer files that you create on the C D so you don't have to be stood there and enter them. And it creates a big old log of everything. It's not a log wheel, it's more of another in file. Files.winnt, the ones that it saved, where it saved them. No, it doesn't compress the files, I noticed, so... Yeah, so then what happens is you take that disk and then when you install Windows and it says at the bottom press F5 for automated system restore, you press F5, you stick your disk in and then it starts restoring the system for you. I mean, it doesn't save much I think it says just like a default configuration, so you have to install all your programs again. 
So yeah, but it's it's a nice functionality to have. And right now we can create them thanks to NT Backup. As if that wasn't enough new features for one build, this is the first build that also has click lock in it. Now there's no UI to enable it, so if we look at XP's UI for it, uh, we can turn it on here and it says enables you to highlight or drag without holding down the mouse button. Now as I said there's no UI in this build for it, so we have to go straight into the registry, like we did for the lane buttons, they're still not working by the way. We've got to use the preferences, now we have to change this 3E to a BE. Okay, then we close that, mouse that turn up again, then we log off, and log back on. Then if we hold down the mouse button, let go, then we get the nice selection rectangle. I don't know if that's got a proper name or anything, but it's called the selection rectangle. Yep. So there we are, that's, this is the first build that has that in it. Now the Shell team must have been busy in the month since the last build, because also in Shell 32 in this build is support for the categorizers. Now what are they? Now in XP, if you right click on an explorer window, you can show in groups. And there we see it. And that displays it like this for date modified. You get today, earlier this week, last week, and if you sort by size, you get tiny, small, medium, and so on. Now it's in 2211, but it's not. And what do I mean by that? Well, the code for it exists in Shell 32, and the resources, as you can see here, also exist to support it. But there's no UI in Explorer to actually turn on showing groups and even if you could do that I don't think um, Explorer sends the required um, interface messages to get the iCategorizers out to display it like that so you can't actually see them in Explorer but if you could you'd probably be seeing this UI here the choose file attribute that you would like to group by now this dialog box it's gone by the next build so you won't ever see it because you can't enable it in this build and it's gone in the next one so yeah, you probably have to choose this and you'd like, I don't know, you'd probably say, this is a list view by the way, the white bit in the middle, it's a list view, so you'd probably say, uh, tick the box next to size or something, and then you click OK, and then it'd display like that. But yeah, you can't see it in this build, so I'm afraid this dialog is as close as you're going to get to them in this build. The last little change I want to show is also a shell thing, so they've been even more busy than we thought, and it's these. Now these are called web view barricades and that's because this thing here is called the web view and this is a barricade because it stops you from doing stuff now in this build this is the first build where they're toggleable and you can toggle them like that and it actually saves that in the registry per user now in the last build if we go to we have to go to win and default in this build because the root is not considered a folder that needs barricading Yep, we get it, and you can click show files. Also notice a different picture as well, the cogs were there instead of the Windows logo. Yep, anyway, this is a per explorer setting in this, so it's per user, but it's per session as well. So if we kill explorer, and then run it again, go away task manager, and then navigate back to the WinNT, we get the, the barricade again. So that happens every time in this build and by extension Windows 2000. But obviously in this build they thought, ooh that's a bit of a... nobody likes doing that every time, so they've made it toggleable. But the, it's not just the C and WinNT and System32 where it happens, it also happens on the network places, entire network. So you can hide that and you get the Windows logo again down here. That's also a change from the last build because in the last build you didn't get that, you got some computers attached to a network. So yeah, you can view the entire contents of the network. And also, the last place that this is enabled is in the control panel. Actually there's uh, 23 options familiar with the missing users one. Now if you have the barricade on, you get the Windows logo at the bottom again, so you can see it's a barricade. Now you get these seven options, yep, that's right, isn't it? Yep, you get these seven options. Now I don't know if they're the most recently used, and that's why they're on the 
that displayed most prominently. Or if they're the ones where you can cause the least damage to the computer, and they put the other ones where you can do that, behind the barricade. Because it's about safety in it really, the barricade. So you can't go spelunking into the system 32 folder and all that if you don't really need to. So yeah, WebView Barricades are toggleable in this build. One of the bugs of this build happens if you have new hardware on startup. Now you see I've added a new virtual disk, it's completely blank, I haven't done anything to it. If I boot up with that attached, still don't need headless, eventually, when we log on, you get the found new hardware dialog. Now this dialog never goes away. It doesn't seem to do anything. And if you look in Task Manager, run DLL32, it's running the dialog. It pegs the CPU like full beans. It goes full beans and it never ever stops. And it doesn't go away or anything. So that's one of the bugs in this build that hardware wizard. When you first log on, it's plug and play I think. When that's gone. So I have to kill that to actually do anything usefully. Now since I attached a disk, let's look at the disk management. Now in this build you can't format the disk or anything. It's not because the driver is not loaded, because the driver is loaded. As you can see the hardware vendor vbox hard disk so it knows uh, what it is and it's loaded and that. But you can't like, format it or add it or anything. It doesn't know what partition style it has because it doesn't have a partition style. Now I've taken a trip via XP and I've initialised the disk, the blank disk in XP. I haven't formatted it or anything, I've just initialised it. So then when you go to disk management, now in this build, it actually works now and you can get the right signature and disk up with wizard. Now this this checkbox here is new for this build. And you can do that and it upgrades it to dynamic. Now what you can do, what else is new in this build, is this GPT style partitions which you can initialise, and you can even format them as well on this one I think. Create volume, when it actually gets on. Okay, make it E, make it NTFS. And... And then it hangs, like most stuff does in this build when you do it with the discs, because this is... I don't know if this is a problem with VirtualBox, or with just the uh, disk management stuff but again when you try and initialize the disk it pegs the CPU back to 99 so if you can you can kill it but and then get back to the UI but you can't really do anything now because it's waiting for it to finish and that's pretty much all I've got to show you about the build I think there's some resource strings which I'll show you over some over some music and scrolling along in the background so you can see those without me talking about them. So yeah, thanks for watching.